Hello, in this mind map, we are going to look at specifically neoplasms or tumours in the female genital tract. Probably a useful approach would be to consider them in terms of the location or the components of the female genital tract and also the tissues or the tissue types that are present in each location site. Because this is a very large and a complex organ system, let's go site by site. So the first thing we're going to look at are the ovaries. If you recall your histology of the ovaries, we can divide them into three main components. The ovarian surface epithelium, which gives rise to epithelial type tumours and carcinomas. The ovarian stroma, which gives rise to sex cord stromal tumours. And of course, the germ cells. For the surface epithelium, uh, the tumours actually range from benign to borderline to carcinoma, and uh, these are often quite cystic and large. The main histologic types would be mucinous tumours, serous tumours, and clear cell tumours. So it is very important for the clinicians to decide whether they are malignant or at the benign end of the spectrum. For ovarian stromal tumours, these would include uh, fibrothecomas, sertoli latex cell tumours, as well as granulosa cell tumours. And unlike the epithelial tumours grossly, these are often more solid in appearance. They may also give rise to some virilizing signs. Now for germ cell tumours, uh, one is the teratoma, which is again often cystic, similar to epithelial tumours. Teratomas can be divided into mature cystic teratomas, which contain only differentiated mature elements and are considered to be benign, so surgical excision is curative, or they can be considered immature, which essentially would make them malignant, and these can be prone to recurrence and tumor spread. We also have the dysgerminoma, which is essentially equivalent to the seminoma seen in males in uh, testicular tumors. And another type of germ cell tumour would be the yolk sac tumour. And we can also have embryonal carcinomas and finally choriocarcinomas. Choriocarcinomas can also occur in the uterus as part of gestational trophoblastic disease. So among the germ cell tumours, uh, most of them are actually malignant except for the mature cystic teratoma. Also, one mustn't forget the possibility of uh, METS or metastatic carcinoma going to the ovaries. Classically, we have the Krukenberg tumour, which is metastatic gastric adenocea. This often affects both ovaries, giving rise to bilateral enlargement, and again, it's usually solid in gross appearance. The next site we're going to look at is the uterus, and here I'm outlining for you the endometrium. So this is a very large and important component of the uterus, which gives rise to epithelial tumours. It's a glandular lining. So let's start by looking at endometrial tumours. These would be endometrial carcinomas, if malignant, and sometimes they can be preceded by a pre-malignant phase of endometrial hyperplasia. There are two main types of endometrial carcinomas, type 1 and type 2, with different uh, risk factors, different epidemiology, and different histology and prognosis as well. Uh, usually endometrial hyperplasia precedes type 1 endometrial carcinoma. Now the myometrium is also another potential source for neoplasms, and we know that this is composed primarily of smooth muscle tissue. So the main uh, tumours that arise here would be smooth muscle in origin. Most often they would be benign. These are very, very common tumours known as leiomyomas or in the layman term as fibroids. And the malignant counterparts would be called leiomyosarcoma. The next main section is the uterine cervix. Again, it's very important to know the normal histology of the cervix because then you can work out the tumours that arise here. So tissue type is important. The ectocervix is lined by stratified squamous epithelium and this is more on the outer part of the uterine cervix and therefore this gives rise to squamous cell carcinoma. So it is important to take note of the progression. Uh, usually squamous cell carcinomas do not just arise suddenly. There is often a progression from pre-malignant cervical intraepithelial neoplasia to carcinoma in situ. And then finally, when the basement membrane is invaded, it becomes invasive squamous cell carcinoma. The endocervical canal or the endocervix 
is lined in contrast by glandular epithelium, and this gives rise to adenocarcinoma. Again, there is a pre-malignant phase, which is adenocarcinoma in situ. Um, this is just before the basement membrane is invaded. The cells do look malignant, and then finally this can progress to adenocarcinoma. It's very important to note that squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma and the pre-malignant conditions are associated with HPV infection, particularly certain types, um, type 16 and 18, and this is the whole basis for cervical smears or pap smears and HPV screening. And also that for vaccination to prevent the occurrence of squamous and adenocarcinoma. Moving downwards, looking at the vagina and the vulva, we can also have very similar to the uterine ectocervix, vein or vin. Vein stands for vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia and vin is vulval intraepithelial neoplasia. They are both pre-malignant conditions also associated with HPV infection and can similarly progress to invasive squamous cell carcinoma. And last but not least, Let's remember the fallopian tube as well. This is a relatively uncommon site of tumours, but certainly can give rise to adenocarcinomas, which are often serious in appearance. And these can be quite occult uh, at initial presentation. So one other tumour that I want to mention, which can involve the endometrium, is the adenosarcoma or carcinosarcoma. These are interesting tumors because they are mixed tumors. As the names suggest, adenosarcoma, actually they have benign glandular components but malignant stromal components because if you recall the endometrium has not only glandular components but also has endometrial stroma. Um, if you remember the definition of endometriosis is the occurrence of both endometrial glands and or endometrial stroma in sites outside the uterus. So adenosarcoma is a malignant tumor where the stromal component is malignant and we also can have a mixed malignant tumor where both the glandular and stromal components are malignant and these are called carcinosarcomas or sometimes malignant mixed molarian tumors or MMMTs. So here is just a very quick approach to how to classify tumors in the female genital tract. It is a rather complex organ system, as you can see. So what we did was to break it down into components or into individual locations, break down these locations in turn into the tissue types. So for example, in the ovary or surface epithelium, we have stroma, we have germ cells, and this will help you to remember better the types of tumors that can arise here. Uh, just a final note, many of the tumors in the female genital tract go through these pre-malignant phases. Um, this occurs in the ectocervix, in the endocervix, also in the vagina and the vulva, as well as in the endometrium, where we can have endometrial hyperplasia preceding invasive endometrial carcinoma. And also in the ovarian tumors, we can have a range of benign neoplasms, we have the borderline ones, which are sort of progressing and look a little bit worse, but are not yet invasive, and then all the way to invasive carcinoma involving the ovaries.